Hey YouTube, XCT here. In this video I'm going to show a tool I created a while ago called WinSSH, which you can use to obtain a foothold in a network without using one of the big C2 frameworks and still have things like file up and download, port forwarding, socks and so on. To show how this works I'm going to use one of the initial steps of Shinra, one of the Red Team Labs on Volnlab, and here you fish a user, you send him a binary and he will just execute it. So this is our scenario. Um, there's an EDR running, but this doesn't actually cause any detections at this point. All right, so this tool is called WinSSH. It has been public on GitHub for a while, and essentially it just wraps the OpenSSH binaries um, on Windows. And the point is that you can basically, as a normal user, you are allowed to spawn SSH server on a high port. There's like no special privileges required for that. And then you can connect there and you have like all the features that SSH has, just like port for warning, file up and downloads and so on. So this is really useful. So that's like the normal function. You just run the binary. It just compiles to a single binary. So you have to just upload one thing, um, start it, and then the SSH server spawns and listens on a high port. Um, but obviously the Windows firewall won't really let you connect there in like a real scenario. So there's also another option where you can specify a tunnel server and a tunnel port. And what this does is basically a back connection to your machine. So it SSHs into your machine um, with a key that's also like compiled into the binary. And then it forwards the local listen port it created to your machine. So you can then just SSH to localhost and basically have an SSH connection to a victim machine, even though there's no like inbound traffic possible. And we're going to do this like practical in a second, it's just um, so you have an overview. Um, and to actually run this, basically just clone the repository, set up your Rust environment, and then do cargo build release. All right, so the, the only thing we really have to do is here first compile the whole thing after cloning it. And of course, you have to have the Rust environment set up, but I already have that. And then if you go to files here, it generates a couple of files. Um, there's key and key pub. Key is basically the private key you use to connect to the SSH server. It will spawn on the victim. Um, obviously, this is the public key for this. And there's also key reverse, which is generated. This key um, is basically used to connect back to whatever machine you define. So if you want to have it connect back to your attacker VM, you have to add a local user and add the public key to the authorized keys file so it can actually do that. Um, we can do like tail on PC passwd here you have to basically add a local user right so it can connect back to your machine obviously you don't have to do that on your kali vm or whatever you can set up an extra system where you ssh to um, where the back connection lands and then it's a bit more like secure in that sense right all right on the other hand it also has the sshd.exe file this is like the normal compiled one that's not from me that's from the project I linked here in the readme. Um, and there's a couple of config files and so on. Okay, if we compile this, it essentially creates, besides this directory, one binary, which is this one. And this is what you upload to the target and run. You saw here that there are a couple of options you have to set. Um, if you just send an exe and expect the user to click it, and then you want something to happen, you obviously have to hard code these. Um, this is not so difficult, right? Um, I already did this here. Essentially, you just have here the argument handling. Um, you comment it out and you hard code the values. So in my case, since this is the Shinra lab, this is my IP, I wanted to connect back to port 22. And the user I created, as you can see here, is called tunnel. And obviously, you want to have SSH running on your VM uh, because otherwise it can't connect back, right? Okay. So if you remember Shinra, there's this um, round cube here, which the company uses for email. And there's a user asking for a specific tool and you will send that tool over and then they will run it. So this is like the phishing scenario here. So we can just do um, a two here. That's the user that's waiting, it's Ashley. Then we just um, write something here. Um, doesn't really matter. Let's just do um, your HR tool. Please see attached. Like there doesn't have to be a lot of content here. 
Um, I'm actually going to copy this um, WinSSH file to my desktop and call it, let's call it hrv1.exe. And then if we like do an ls here, you will see that that's fairly big. Well, that's due to being Rust, right? It always creates like big binaries. Um, and actually the file size limit on roundcrypt here is two megabytes. So this would be an issue, but we can still strip the binary, which will like reduce the size substantially. And now it's 1.8 and perfectly fits within the attachment. Um, that's just one thing you can do to like get the binary a bit smaller. Then we attach the file here and then we just send it over. Um, before I do that, I'm going to use journal CTL to like monitor the connection so we can actually see when SSH is connecting to our machine. All right, now we can send it. And we just wait here and see if we can get a connection back. And you can see that we actually get a connection here. Session opened um, with this tunnel user. And if you now like grab for 802020, which is the default port, it spawns the local SSH server on. We can see that this was actually forwarded to our machine. So the victim machine connected back to us via SSH on port 22 with the tunnel user and then forwarded out port 8022, which is a local SSH listener. And now we can essentially do um, SSH here and we have to use the key, like I mentioned before. We just do dummy because we don't know the username, right? We send it to the victim. Um, obviously for an email, we can kind of know, but we also don't know the domain. So we just use dummy here and connect to this forwarded port. And one thing that this does is actually write the domain and username here in the SSH banner. So now we know, right? Um, this means we can now use this information, like we have the domain username, so we just do Ashley Lewis at schindler-dev.vl and then connect again. And this actually allows us to SSH into the machine. And now we can like do anything we want. We got a proper SSH shell. What's the advantage to just like using Netcat or something like that? Well, you have all the features SSH has, right? You can like upload download files, you can forward ports, you can use SOX forwarding. Um, you really have a lot more options. All right, that's all I wanted to show. Um, it's just an alternative way of doing things. Like if you don't want to use a big C2 framework or you have trouble doing AV evasion, this is currently not detected. I don't expect it to stay like that. It does use the original binary, so the binaries itself aren't suspicious, but obviously this is like um, doing a couple of PowerShell calls to like get the, the current username or to modify the config files, create a temp directory in Windows temp. So it's far from being undetectable or anything like that. It's just not flagged at the moment. So enjoy it while it lasts, extend it, um, whatever you wish, right? So thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.